Welcome back to our latest Hold Your Gas episode where I give you my hot take on audio equipment, plugins, and software without all the bullshit, marketing spin, and hot air. Apogee is the latest professional audio company to step in the ring to battle it out in the entry-level two-channel interface market. Will it make you sound like a pro, as they claim, or are they just making us out to be a bunch of schmucks? Let's get into it. Recently, all the big names in professional audio like SSL and Neve and Universal Audio have all entered the two-channel interface market with claims of higher-end conversion, preamps and gimmicks to convince the average consumer that they are worth two, three, and sometimes four times the price of a regular two-channel interface. I'm looking at you, Neve. <laughs> well, next in line in this current trend are Apogee. Wait, with the, wait, what are they calling it? The boom? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's break down the pros, the cons, and the absolute spin that Apogee are trying to sell us here. First up, let's look at their onboard DSP. This really seems to be the buzzword at the moment, onboard processing. Basically what they mean is software that you can use whilst recording in place of hardware, like actual physical preamps, EQs and compressors. But here's the thing, all of this DSP, they're just plugins at the end of the day. They're not real pieces of hardware. They're usually the same encoding and software that are in their standard plugin suite. And here the ECS channel strip is really no different. It's kind of just a plugin that you can record through whilst tracking. And sure, this plugin might really help you dial in a sound and compress an EQ on the way in when tracking. But unlike using a plugin in mixing in post, once you've applied this during tracking, you cannot undo it. Now, don't get me wrong. I am all for using certain processing while recording, but with a caveat, I will only do this with real outboard EQs and compressors and preamps, not plugins, never plugins. Despite what all the plugin manufacturers will tell you, there is still a big, big difference in the quality between an analog emulation plugin and the real hardware counterpart. And this is a conversation that is guaranteed to piss a lot of people off online. Some people really still don't wanna believe that hardware is often still a better solution than plugins in terms of processing quality. And when tracking and processing on the way in whilst recording, nothing really beats real hardware especially with compressors and EQs. There is a very obvious difference still when using real compressors, especially when tracking. But let's leave that argument maybe for another video. But if you've got any questions about hardware versus plugins, hit me up in that comment section down below. But for this one, I am calling the ECS channel strip total spin. Next up is their claim of 62 dB of preamp gain. Well, this is kind of an easy one. Most two channel interfaces are getting anywhere from 56 dB to 60 dB of gain nowadays, even the lowly focus right to I2. And if you know Julian Krauss, he's an awesome YouTuber and he actually did a video on preamp gain a little while ago. And I'll put a link down to that video below. And basically in this video, he was showing that not all preamp gain is equal, especially on these kind of two channel interfaces. So a DB or two here or there really isn't that big a difference in terms of headroom and clarity necessarily. And on top of that, what you should know is that if you're using a condenser microphone rather than a dynamic microphone like this, you're not going to need 62 dB of gain on a preamp. You really don't because those microphones have a higher output. You really only need high levels of preamp gain if you're using something like the SM7B or other dynamic microphones or miking up quiet sound sources like acoustic guitar or maybe when you're using ribbon microphones. They generally need more preamp gain. But if you're using predominantly condenser microphones, you are not going to need 62 dB of gain on any preamp. So I'm going to call that one total spin as well. Now, the last bit of clever marketing that I have to mention here is the use of this interface and its integration with the iPad. And to me, 
this was probably the weirdest thing about how they've marketed this device because their whole tagline on this is that it's for pros. It's a pro device. It's a pro level two channel interface. Now, I don't know any pro that is recording music with an iPad. And to be honest, like this could be a great feature for some users, but if this is a pro device, why would you be then integrating it with a lower level or entry level other device like an iPad? It's just a bit weird and contradictory to their whole sales pitch in the beginning. So definitely a bit of spin there. Now it's not all doom and gloom with this device. Let's look at some of the pros. First up, the conversion. The Apogee Boom actually offers 117 dB of dynamic range. And this is actually a pretty big deal because to get these kind of high quality converters and this kind of dynamic range, you would typically be buying a much more expensive interface. And this is really something that Apogee have been known for having really great high quality converters in their devices. So I'm not surprised to see it here, but it is impressive to see it in an entry level two channel interface. So good work Apogee. The other major win here is the Apogee Booms control software. A lot of manufacturers are actually really upping their game in this department and Apogee are surely no slouch. They offer a pleasant looking user interface that seems intuitive and it offers loopback. And really, I think that all interfaces nowadays should have mixed control software that offers this loopback functionality because it is crucial for getting audio from the interface into things like live streams or conference calls or anything like that. So loopback functionality is really crucially important moving forward into the future and the way that we use this technology. So it's great to see companies putting that feature in their interfaces and Apogee, great job. Lastly, it's not all positives with this interface either. First up is the price. On their website, it says that the boom is selling for $299. Now, admittedly, that's actually a really great price for the quality of the converters that they are offering here. But, and this is a big but, there are some real shortcomings with this device. On top of that, if you're like me from Australia, this device is actually retailing here for, wait for it, $499. So that puts it at more than double most two channel interfaces. And that's interfaces with at least two mic preamps, which leads me to my next big negative of this interface. The Apogee Boom only has one mic pre, one. I thought this was a pro device. Why does it have only one mic pre? Sure, it also has a high Z input for instruments and some consumers might be getting this interface to do vocals and guitar work at the same time simultaneously. However, a true pro device, even just a two channel device, but a pro level two channel device should have two mic preamps. Because here's the thing, if you don't have two mic preamps, you can't do really any kind of multi-miking setup. And if you're new to audio, you might not know this, but on a lot of sources, in a lot of occasions, we might use more than one microphone on any given sound source. So the Apogee Boom can't do things like stereo mic techniques or any multi-mono recording. Say I wanted to add two different microphones on a guitar amp, something I do all the time. I would not be able to do that with this interface. So that is a big, big negative for me personally, because even if you're just starting out recording or have a minimal mic setup, there are many, many occasions where you would potentially put more than one microphone up on a sound source, typically guitars or acoustic guitars or other acoustic instruments, or even on a vocal. So let's recap, onboard DSP, <laughs> preamp gain, <laughs> iPad connectivity, Conversion quality, software control with loopback, price, and IO options. So my final thoughts, whilst the conversion quality offered by Apogee 
may be impressive. The lack of at least two dedicated mic pre's on an interface that actually costs double of most of its competitors. It's kind of a no deal for me. A pro level device this is not. So if I were you, I would hold your gas on this one. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, hit me up in that comment section down below. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.